I thought I'd spend a couple of minutes talking to you about the experience that we've developed recently deploying extremely large-scale, high-reliability networks. I've spent the past uh, 30 years building applications for the utility space. And most of us don't think about the utility space that often because our water and electricity and gas show up pretty much every day exactly how we, we expect them to. But in order to do that, it takes high reliability systems that are very focused on safety and longevity. And in, Utilities expect that same, those same qualities from their suppliers. That is, that we, when we supply to them, they want products from us that have extreme durability, that maintain their accuracy over a long period of time, that are economical uh, and easy to operate. Um, and building up that kind of expertise, dealing with the outside world, uh, is very challenging. A lot of the things that uh, you talk about in these types of conferences have to do with environments indoors, as we just heard, smart buildings. When you get outside and you've got to deal with minus 40 to plus 85 C and 15 to 20 year lifespans, both for powered and battery powered devices, it's a very challenging and interesting world. And we've developed a lot of expertise about how you develop devices that meet those kinds of characteristics. When we want to connect these devices with a network, we need to think about environments that you don't normally think about, which are sub-basements, water pits. Uh, I did a tour once in Hong Kong. 50% of the population lives above the 17th floor. Meters are embedded in concrete bunkers every third floor behind the elevators. Very difficult environments in order to establish communications. And we typically need to get 100% coverage requirements with, with accuracy rates of 99% or above. So challenging environments that have built a lot of expertise inside our company for how to deliver to the utility space. And we started out really working on the automation of just collecting usage information about electricity, gas, and water for billing purposes. But as these devices have become more powerful, we realize now that they are sensors on the side of the house that are able to detect some very subtle phenomenon. How effectively electricity is being distributed, where waste is, occurs in the distribution process. We can sense temperature and pressure in gas and understand where leaks are occurring. 30% of water that's put into the water distribution system leaks out before it makes it to endpoints. Where is that water going? How do we detect that? So these devices are becoming sensors. They're generating vast amounts more data and creating tremendous opportunities for us to reduce waste and improve outcomes for our utility customers. And increasingly, that dialogue is really moving beyond utilities to cities. Because first of all, many cities are water utilities themselves. But they, cities are coming and asking questions about how they can build more sustainable, resilient, uh, and safe environments, and the kind of technology that we've developed in the utility space applies in that environment as well. But in order to get there, our company needed to really think more broadly about how we connected devices and recruited partners and developed ecosystems. So we made a really important decision. At the beginning of this year, iTron acquired Silver Spring Networks. And Silver Spring was an, a leader in our space in developing standard-based networks and recruiting developers to participate in the ecosystem with a broader idea than just focusing on the utility space, which had been ITRON's historical focus. And so we, together, we are now looking beyond utilities at smart cities and beyond at the industrial internet of things. So a tremendous opportunity for us. And that opportunity we see as, on a combined basis, our companies now have over 200 million two-way communicating devices that have been deployed worldwide. In North America alone, our network is over 2 million square miles of territory of the most heavily populated territory in the US. Most of the major cities have electric utilities that have deployed solutions that are from ITRON or the former Silver Spring. And we are deploying these at a very rapid rate. And as these networks are deployed, we're going to see that the standards that have been employed in how we put these networks together create great opportunities for partnership to put additional devices underneath these networks and to drive more innovation. So what are the kinds of applications that utilities and cities are looking at? So we talked about the security and reliability of electricity, gas, and water, and, and reducing waste in these opportunities. 
Silver Spring had also taken a very strong lead in street lighting, and we're going to talk about that here in just a moment. But one of the interesting characteristics of putting in street light control networks is being 20 feet off the ground in large urban environments and establishing a network creates some really interesting opportunities for looking at a broader range of problems relating to safety, transportation, waste management, sustainability. There are big topics, and I think everybody intuitively understands that urban environments can run much more efficiently, and there are enormous amounts of waste that can be eliminated. And once this network canopy is in place, we are adding sensors through partners, adding sensors underneath our network and generating data that are allowing cities to run in a much more efficient and sustainable manner. So let's look at a couple of examples of, of where it is that we're doing that. Most of our utility customers are experiencing, as we are experiencing, an increase in severe weather events. In 2017 alone, we had major hurricanes with Harvey in Houston, Irma in Florida, and of course Maria in Puerto Rico. Smart infrastructure has had a dramatic impact on how quickly power is restored and how utilities are thinking about how they send crews out into the field. In Houston, the outage duration was reduced by 25% as a result of smart infrastructure. And in Florida, almost half of Florida Power and Light's customers were put back online within 24 hours of the hurricane hitting. Smart infrastructure is very good for improving the reliability and the resiliency of these networks. But the utility wanted even more from us. They came to us and they wanted to talk about developing a pole sensor that allowed them to determine whether or not the pole had been knocked off a of vertical so that they could prop more quickly dispatch crews out in the field in order to detect the condition and target their response. So this battery-powered pole sensor communicates across a common network and allows them to really focus their crews more effectively. I'm sure many of you have seen in newspapers uh, that unfortunately utilities occasionally have really catastrophic events, gas delivery utilities have catastrophic events with gas leakage and eventually explosions. We had a major one here in San Bruno years ago, but there are house and apartment related fires that are a result of methane building up. And so we have a major customer in the Northeast that is deploying a significant number of methane sensors and so they can actually determine methane leakage rates well in advance of a safety condition occurring out in the field. And these are small, again, battery-powered devices communicating across a common network that's used for metering and other purposes in order to bring methane sensing information back in order to improve safety and reliability of the gas network. And then finally, really a fascinating one around traffic and transportation. There are enormous opportunities, and I would think we'd be very sensitive in the South Bay to this. Traffic congestion, uh, parking problems, air quality are all significant issues, and technology can play a significant role in helping us to alleviate uh, uh, urban congestion if we're more able to plan our roads properly, time our traffic lights, direct people to proper parking solutions. Hall of Fame, a partner of ours, has actually got a, 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 a traffic monitoring and car counting device that's used for monitoring traffic levels and so urban planning can be done more effectively. And when we talk about a partnership like this, it's that ITRON has published a software and hardware development kit and listed a partner who has in turn gone out, developed the application, and used our customer base and common network in order to deploy this out in the field. So to give you an idea about what it's like um, in order to uh, uh, work with one of these development kits, uh, I want to just briefly talk about and then demonstrate one of the applications that a partner of ours developed on the network. So a partner, Data Buoy, downloaded from us a software and hardware development kit, and with very little assistance from ITRON, was able to build a really extraordinary application. Unfortunately, we've been reading in headlines about um, some really horrible urban safety issues relating to gun violence. And one of the challenges that we have is how do we quickly determine whether or not a gunshot has occurred and properly target a response to that gunshot to, to uh, deploy public safety directly to where the condition has occurred. So what you're going to see is uh, an example of how a gunshot detection application can be used to improve 
urban safety. And in order to demonstrate this, I'd like to uh, invite my colleague uh, Itai Dadon out onto the stage in order to uh, do this demonstration with us. Thank Welcome you, Philip. Last year, here at IoT World, we launched our developer program to expand on this vision of the multi-application network. Since then, many innovators from around the world have joined us in this exciting journey to make cities and utilities more resourceful. As you said, Philip, safety and security is a big deal for, for a lot of those cities around the world. And that's why we decided to demonstrate to you here today the data buoy solution for gunshot detection. The data buoy team developed the most innovative gunshot detection system in the world. It's the fruit of many years of R&D development to create a fully automated gunshot detection system. This gunshot detection system works with an array of Wi-Fi-based acoustic sensors that gather data and sending it to our IoT Edge platform. That Edge platform is where all the data buoy algorithms for acoustic uh, treating is ported. And we integrated all this solution inside the Luminaire. Why the Luminaire? As Philip mentioned to you before, ITRON is the world leader in smart street lighting in cities around the world. With more than 3 million lights deployed in cities like Chicago, Miami, Copenhagen, and Paris, just to name a few. This is how we're planning on taking this kind of new innovative solutions to the market. So maybe we want to see it in action. Sure, let's do it. So since uh, we didn't want to bring a gun to stage, right? And it's kind of impossible to simulate a gunshot. What we did with this system is train it to detect and localize a hand clap. OK, much more benign. So what's interesting is think about it. If we're able to train this system to detect hand claps, combine that with our ability to update over the air all the devices in our network, that gives us a solution that can be enhanced and grow over time to detect other type of events. Think about car accidents, for example, Philip. So I'll go to the Luminar and do my magic clap. You ready? Oh, before I do that. What you see here on the screen is the data buoy cloud application that actually is what's used by cities and security forces to detect those alerts. So what you see here is the map of where we are, OK, from the sky. And on the bottom is a timeline. And when I will clack, it's supposed to provide an alert. Now, we also may, uh, set up this system to send an SMS to you, Philip. Did you get it? There it is. Excellent. So what you saw is the alert showed up here within seconds, and we sent the SMS to the nearest security officer or police officer that is in the region, and that is how we solve real problems today around the world. With that, I want to thank the, the Data Buoy team for working with us and allowing us to show their innovative technology here today. I welcome you to see them and all our other partners in our booth. Thank you very much. Thanks, thank you, Itai. So what does the platform and the network look like that supports all these types of applications? I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the characteristics of, of uh, what we're working on. And the first topic I want to talk about is standards. Our customers want choice and value. They don't want to be locked into a single supplier. They want to have a dynamic ecosystem. And they really want to see us working in an environment in which we're able to accelerate innovation. And standards let us do that. Everybody's got to pick their standards, so there are choices that need to be made. We focused on YSUN because we think that YSUN is going to turn into the Wi-Fi for the Internet of Things. It provides the highest data rates, the best standards, and security for us going forward. So we're very excited about YSUN. We also really need to focus on performance. There are a number of standards and solutions that are coming out there that are low cost. That's great. 
but they're also low data rate. And our experience is that data levels are going to continue to increase. Sensors are going to become more powerful. Innovative partners are going to come up with new applications. So we're looking at a high performance network with very low latency because we have some mission critical applications that need to run across this network. We also have to ensure that we're able to achieve reliability rates above 99%. So it's another important characteristic. The performance of the network, though, is never going to be enough by itself. We think that intelligence has to be pushed out to the edge of the network. And we just saw a little bit of that with the data buoy example. But we think this is an important concept. These sensors now have to take on the ability to filter and interpret some of the information that they're seeing in the field so they don't have to send all of their raw data back to a central repository in order to be processed. And there are some fantastic application opportunities that we've got for working with partners there. And of course, security has to be built in from the beginning. The experience that we've had with utilities is great because this is critical infrastructure in which we've been subjected to incredibly rigorous security testing at national labs, and we say that we have military-grade security built into the system. The grid is under attack from a variety of sources, and so we have to have an extremely robust response with uh, depth and defense. Um, we need to be able to use firmware upgrades in order to respond to challenges and continue to uh, have the security and strength of the system evolve over time. And of course, reliability is critical because, as we've said, these applications function in, in hurricane environments and other catastrophes, so the network has to be very robust. And then, and the reason that we're here, we need a vibrant ecosystem. We're not going to come up with all the great ideas. We think you are. We need to provide an open standards-based environment in which we can in unleash innovation by providing software development kits and hardware development kits to allow applications like the gunshot sensing that we just saw for all of the interesting ideas to come together on our platform. And so we very much encourage your active participation, and I want to extend that invitation to come by the booth because we would love to talk about your great ideas and how we can improve our overall system. And then longevity is just an incredibly important part of the way that we think about the networks we're putting out in the field. Unlike the indoor environment where you can replace equipment every two to three years and it just takes a tech walking in, unplugging and replugging something, when you go to a sub-basement or out in the field, getting physical access to these devices can be difficult and expensive, and so we have to build long-term durable uh, equipment that we put out into the field. And we have a long history of doing that and love to talk to you about how it is that we've done that. So in closing, we're on the verge of a tremendous opportunity for increasing efficiency and improving the resourceful use of energy and water, which we think is gonna be a really important issue but also addressing a number of urban issues about economic vitality and the sustainability of cities, eliminating waste and improving the experience of citizens inside cities, even as we look beyond the city environment for applications in other vertical markets. How do we exploit the reach of the networks that we've put out into the field and work with the best and the brightest in order to recruit our partners to help us to enrich the applications in the network that we provide. We look forward to seeing you in our booth and having that discussion going forward. Thanks so much for your time.